Good morning, welcome to the Phoenix Blue update on Friday the 14th of October. I'm Tom Colley and I'll talk to you about the markets and the news this morning. Uh, let's start over with the news. Um, okay, yesterday we had um, some news out of China, which was their trade balance. Um, which showed some significantly negative figures. We were expecting a forecast of 365 billion versus a previous of 346 billion. Um, the data that came in at only 278 billion, which was clearly a, a big disappointment. Now, China has been somewhat off our radar um, in recent months because it hasn't been playing into the markets that we actually trade. We did see this, however, play into the markets in that we saw uh, money moving from China and other Asian countries into um, the yen, which uh, acts as the local safe haven. So um, monies in Asia will tend to run to the Japanese yen um, as their first calling point um, when risk increases. We'll see that on the yen chart in the moment. Uh, a little bit later on, with unemployment claims out of the states, which came out okay, um, below forecast, which is good. We then had crude oil inventories, um, which came in with a figure of the stock holdings were higher than had been forecast. Um, this briefly had a bearish move on the market. The price moved down, but it rebounded and then is actually higher than when it started now. Um, it's back through at a level of about $51 currently. Um, it's uh, stopped us out on, at break-even on a crude trade that we had to the short side. Um, there's still obviously strength in crude oil from the... Um, expectation of the agreement that uh, OPEC are claiming that they'll be putting together. Um, still to be confirmed, we'll be looking for that news because should, um, as they've done on many previous occasions, fail to come to agreement, that will surely have um, a big downside on oil. So we'll be keeping our eyes on that. Today, um, everything, well, a lot of news out of the States. We've got core retail sales, PPI and retail sales at 130 um, we'll obviously be looking for this data to be positive. The market's um, factoring in an expectation for a rate rise in December. Anything that comes through that's really bad um, could have a hit on that expectation. Um, we also have a tentative speech from Mark Carney. Um, I believe this speech was supposed to be yesterday and has been rescheduled to today for some reason. Um, we're obviously very aware, aware of what's going on in the UK, what's going on with the pound at the moment. Um, so that will be very interesting to watch. Um, but you will have to keep your eyes and ears open because we can't give you a specific time on um, when that speech will come. Uh, then at 3 p.m. we've got the uh, consumer sentiment, sentiment out of the states. And then 6.30, Fed Chair um, Janet Yellen speaks. Um, we'd normally expect to have most of our risk off the table by that time on a Friday afternoon. Um, but certainly something that we want to bear in mind. Um, it has the potential to move the markets quite dramatically. We are looking as I said, as the markets having uh, are in the process of pricing in um, a rate rise in December. So everything will be about what she says relative to that. And if there's any sort of uh, hawkish talk, I'm sure we'll see um, that having a sell-off effect in the dollar. Um, we should see um, uh, in our analysis over the weekend, that's 1.30 uh, Eastern time in the States. So it leaves... Um, Friday afternoon trading so we should see some reaction to that um, by the time we're doing our uh, weekend analysis. Okay here is the US dollar. Um, yesterday we sold off from this $98 level um, looking for down to about a level about 97.40 that seems to be the key level at the moment. This, this market does look like it needs to retrace. Um, we are expecting a sell off in this market and 96.50 this level here would seem to be the favoured level um, being a retest of the triangle around there obviously we're not saying that's going to happen um, but 
it, we it, it certainly is an expectation bearing in mind the size of the bullish move we've had what we saw yesterday admittedly overnight we've seen uh we're currently bullish over the close yesterday um but clearly we've got news today which can uh, very easily tip that to the downside um, or potentially even to the upside in terms of the Yellen speech. Over on the yen, um, we didn't see the uh, dollar strength being totally reflected here for something that I've already said, was we saw um, very for poor trade figures out of China, which um, gave the yen some additional strength, bear in mind strength to the downside on this US dollar JPY pair. We saw um, money running for the Asian so, um, safe haven. So having seen price um, or oh, we anticipated price we'd broken through this key level at 104 we were expecting a close above and potentially a move um to the long side before pulling back and uh, taking uh, that market to the long side which we've been waiting to do for a considerable period of time we saw that sell off which now puts that certainly in the short term into question so we were waiting for some sort of clarification in that market um before um a trade opportunity appears again we talked about a correction on the US dollar. Um, naturally, we'll expect that to be reflected in the euro. We've got a level here of about 1.114, which would correlate almost perfectly with 96.50 on the dollar index as that pullback to the identical trend line there. So that would give us uh, an opportunity to get into that um, or after the correction on the dollar um, to get back into that. Uh, I saw a question yesterday, would we trade the correction um, from the dollar back to that level yes if if we can if we've got a clear entry no reason why whatsoever if you're let's say we break this level here in terms of the euro or we break that corresponding level on the uh, dollar index or, or to be fair we break both there's no reason why you wouldn't trade that against trend back to that um, level bearing in mind you're willing to take it or in principle you're willing to take a trade at that level so you're saying price is, is more than likely going to go to that point so yeah by all means um, take that trade back um, to the upside on the euro which obviously would be the downside on the dollar index. Uh, Pound. This is the four-hour chart. Um, on this basis, we appear to be consolidating within this triangle at the moment. This market has been very volatile. Um, we've been looking at trying to trade it intraday um, this week. It has proved particularly difficult um, in terms of uh, getting decent sized moves. We get into a trade, we get a stop to break even. Um, intraday, we don't take profit once uh, when we do put the stop to break even, but then we're finding price coming back and stopping us out at that break even. So although we haven't lost uh, money in this market, we haven't found a way of, of, of actually uh, taking advantage of the volatility. Um, I am interested in these two key levels here. A break in either of, uh, on either of those will clearly give us direction. Um, but personally, I'm looking to trade pound moves in other markets. Any of the cross pairs will give you opportunities. Let's say we break to the downside. We've only got one point of reference because we've got nothing on our charts below that level. Even that's purely a spike down. So we're in a bit of a no man's land. So if it breaks short, we don't have any indication of how far it might go or whatever. Don't get me wrong. If it breaks short, you know, I would suggest you get on, on the train because everything's pointing to the downside. But it may be easier to trade on one of the cross pairs where historically you've got some levels here which can give you some comfort in, in the expectation of how far that might um, rise or fall depending on which pair it is. Uh, another area that you might look to trade the uh, Brexit scenario and the pound weakness is on the FTSE because this is the uh, sell-off we had um, on the day of the, the vote um, and basically ever since there we've had a big bullish run on the FTSE um, we've, in conjunction with devaluation of the pound. Why do we see that? Well, the FTSE 100 is made up of um, mainly um, international based companies. A lot of them are mining companies um, and, and the majority of them earning coming dollars. 
with a pound devaluing their potential profits which are recorded in pounds when they convert those dollar profits back to pounds uh, at an advantageous exchange rate clearly their profitability will increase on that basis so what that's what's driving this market at the moment we had a big rejection of this 69.35 area yesterday um would have liked to get in there missed an opportunity intraday to get in on that um but see potential in this market for further long side if we can get in again i'm looking to get in today and today around this level so that i can have my stops um at break even money off the table before we get to this um or the all-time high that we're up here at the moment um we could be say that well we've got a double top there yes we have um but I, i'm considering that to be a spike and i see the scope to get into this market um above the high of yesterday's uh low test bar um and take that through to that level um and have risk off the table with the view that this will potentially continue going to the long side particularly if we have further devaluation on the pound over on the Aussie, um, we were short the Aussie. We've been short the Aussie for about two weeks from this sort of area up here. Um, we had been looking at this level as being a um, neckline for a four-hour head and shoulders formation uh, through here. Um, that was uh, non-farm on Friday, so we didn't get into that. Would have been nice too, but we don't take those sorts of uh, risks. Um, to be fair you can see it spiked through to get there so but anyway we saw downside there we were already in this market we'd had um our money off the table stops at break even way up here so we got no risk on the table um we took price the price came down to this sort of level when it looked like it might reverse um yesterday um we took 75 percent of the remaining risk off because it looked like it would re reverse just above our target which it actually did and it's pulled all the way back to that same level there um, i think we'll now be out of this market until we see um, this level now being broken or we see a break above this level back to the upside um, in conjunction with that potential dollar correction um, but probably we'll be more interested in waiting for the dollar to correct and then take it back to the downside as the dollar goes potentially back um, on in a bullish run. Over on the Kiwi, um, level here at 7220, we've been watching this um, for the last couple of weeks. Um, we haven't seen the same strength from the New Zealand dollar. We've had the... Uh, Reserve Bank of New Zealand um, talking down the econ economy so somewhat and talking about further rate reductions. However, if we get that dollar correction, there's certainly another potential opportunity around that 72.20 level there um, to take um, a trade back down in the first instance to the trend line, but potential for further downside on a break of that um, based on the outlook for that economy. Uh, finally, the S&P yesterday, um, we saw a rejection of this level through here, clear rejection. Um, we got into this trade intraday. We, the markets moved long for us. We, we're approaching a key level here at 2140. Um, we've got a trend line through here. Uh, potentially, we could see this being the top of a new range. Um, we are clearly what we would be interested in is any sort of break to the downside here. Um, if we get above this level here, we, we're in a trade and we're looking for um, the previous highs as a target for that trade. So we'd be trading the range between here and here, um, but we are aware of this level here. Um, so we won't have with risk will be off the table before we approach that area. Um, and we may get an opportunity to get back in at that level to take it uh, or sorry, to get in again to add in at that level to take that to the top of the market there um, we may even see new highs there but potentially um, our watch list um, for the last couple of weeks has been talking about trading this range between the top and these levels here okay guys that's it for today um, if you like the way we trade if you like those clean charts if you want to um, understand how we combine a technical uh, fundamental and commitment of traders analysis you've got the opportunity to come and trade alongside our top fund managers um, 
in London on Wednesday next week. Uh, I know that's quite short notice now, but we do sell, say this every day. If you are interested in this event on Wednesday, I think there are a few places left. Um, if you go onto the website and the events page, which this is a copy of, um, leave us your details and we'll send you joining instructions and an invite from there. Um, we do this every month around the third week um, of the month. Um, if you can't make this date but would like to be advised of future dates, um, just pop on to um, the contact page or leave a message through this page um, telling us that you, you can't make this date but you'd like to be advised of future dates. Okay guys, um, so hopefully you've had a successful week. It's not been too bad a week for us. Um, we are seeing the markets move. Let's see that we can um, see that continuing um, and have a great weekend and we'll talk to you next week. Goodbye.